Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to everyone wherever you are in the world. And I want to welcome you to today's conversation with Sarah Jane and myself. I am Enolia, and I would like to invite you to join us in the conversation that we're having today, which is how to support other others while being true to yourself. And so with this conversation, I'd like to get started. So welcome, Sarah Jane. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here again with you. I'm, I really enjoy these. <laughs> I do too. It's absolutely wonderful. Our conversation today, I think is gonna be really profound because you, know, you might think twice, oh, how to support others while being true to yourself, but there's a lot of depth in there. And I think where we should begin is, first of all, define being true to yourself. Being true to yourself. And I, I just want to elaborate a little bit more, which is that when we think of being true to ourselves, sometimes we don't give it a second thought. It's like, oh, yeah, you know what? When I want something, I want something. Or when I need something, I just say that I need it. But when we really look past, the labels that we actually have for ourselves, like the daughter, the, the dutiful daughter, the 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 mother, um, all of the different roles that we play, and we go beyond those roles. And this doesn't this isn't just for for women. That's for men too. Okay, you know the dads, the you know the breadwinner, you know all of those particular things. But when we really really go in. Many of us haven't really taken the time to see who we are at our core. How about you? Why don't Why don't you share a little bit? Oh, absolutely. You know, with the upbringing that I had, and please don't get me wrong, I am not saying anything against my family, etc. I'm really not. It's just the era that I was raised in, you know. So you, know, you were coming out of that era where it was the little woman tied to the kitchen sink. Um, we, we definitely were coming out of that era. Um, but yeah, my, my grandmother, the minute she, you know, she, she was a trained nurse, but the minute she became, she married, she was not allowed to work anymore. So, you know, sort of it, and then my mother was a nurse, but then, okay, she fell pregnant and she wasn't expected to work anymore having children, you know eventually she did when we were that bit older but not while we were kids mm. but so women weren't allowed to think about themselves yeah women much more and I'm, and I'm not saying men were told they could think about themselves but I think we came from an I definitely came from an era where it was much more that it was about everybody else and if you were on the list, you were at the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, yeah, yeah I, I, I wanna elaborate on what you're saying with that because it makes me think about my travels around the world. You know, like a lot of times, um, if you're out of America and if you're out of Europe, you know, a lot of times we, we have these, these roles that, you know, hey, we've broken out of a lot of different things, right? We're, we're I don't want to say everybody's a women's liver, but we, we know that there are liberated things that we've particularly broke through that were ideologies and examples of how women should behave. But a lot of those are not gone all around the world. Mm -hmm. So men have this traditional role where they have to be the people who bring in the work, the money and everything else. And the women are supposed to take care of the family, the children, the, 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 the food and so on and so forth. And, and neither should two shall cross. Yeah. But I'm also finding that many of the people in these roles, the younger people, Maybe not necessarily the, the the ones who are who have settled into it. They're used to it. It's always been like this. It'll always be like this. But the younger people coming in, and I'm saying from 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 twenty to to thirty something, are saying, "I don't want to do this. I don't like this. Why do I have to be a subservient um, uh, uh, wife that just has many, many, many children? Why can't I choose to embrace my wisdom? Why can't I work? Why can't I bring in money?" the same as a man. And then here's the other side of that coin too, because it's not just the women, the men are basically saying, why do I have to be pressured from my family to fulfill this role? Why can't I share 
um, what I want to do in terms of having children with just my wife, because the families in many traditions dictate the fact that you should have many, many children and not necessarily that it's kept between the husband and wife. And I know some people are like, what are you kidding in this day and age? But absolutely, absolutely in traditional families. So when you think about that, this is huge. This is huge. Men also are, 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 are looking at the fact that, well, I'm, I'm doing what I'm, I'm being told because if I don't do what I'm told, you know, the family will go against me. And then, you know, I, I don't have a family to embrace because they'll, they'll literally black, blacklist me or, you know, ostracize me, you know. And so how, how do you be true to yourself in the midst of all of this pressure? And who is yourself in the midst of all of this pressure of outside judgment? Oh, absolutely. Who am I? Yeah. And, and I suppose that was part, part of my healing journey. It was because I, because of the insecurities of what happened to me as a child and that, you know, I'm not, there's no judgment here. It was an accident, you know, so and I get, and I am absolutely 100% behind that. You know, I'm not blaming anybody here. Um, it was accident and then circumstances. But my insecurities made me a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And people pleasers definitely give absolutely no consideration to themselves at all. They spend all their time worrying about other people, what they're thinking, what will keep them happy, etc., etc., etc. And it was that wake up call. Yeah, and, and that was thanks to something else that happened that left me so exhausted that I hadn't got the energy for all the people pleasing anymore. But then suddenly there was that thought in my head, and I don't know where it came from, but there was an enlightenment, if you like. Why am I worrying about what other people are thinking about me when they probably aren't? They're worrying about what's going on in their own life. They might even be worrying about what I'm thinking about them when I'm not. And it was just that, whoa, it was just that light bulb moment mm -hmm. of, I can actually start finding me. What do I like doing? What's right for me? Actually, sorry, this marriage isn't, I'm out. You know, it was taking, and it doesn't mean your marriage is over. It just was for me. It's talk to that individual. Is there anything that you can work together? Because if somebody has fallen in love with you, maybe they've seen in you something you haven't seen in yourself that you're now waking up to. Yeah. So I was have a chance. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're saying waking up to. So my experience, a little bit different. But it's interesting that you use the word people pleasers. I think there's a people pleaser side on my side, but I also think that projection and giving away my power was huge. Yeah. I think that the judgment that, you know, well, a dutiful daughter looks like this. And then I took that judgment of that dutiful daughter and I was like, I really projected it onto myself. If I'm not doing this, 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 I'm not the dutiful daughter. If I'm not doing, you know, the cooking, the cleaning, even though I'm working a full time job and I don't act as the martyr, putting the kids events and activities and my husband's events and activities at the time um, first, then, you know, I'm not being the, the true wife. And then the thing about it is that it took me a long time to realize that why who, who said I needed to be the martyr? Who said that I needed to come second in every single thing that I do? Why am I looking my, at myself as like a second class citizen and everybody else is above me or comes before me? So in that understanding that I am of value and I am worthy, worthy enough to be equal status of importance with the rest of my family members, that's when it started to change with me. And I actually called it. And I called the family, I sat everyone down and I said, basically, these are the things that I want to accomplish as well as the things that you want to accomplish, all of you. 
and that sometimes to the kids, you're going to have to find a ride because what I need to do is just as important. And then I'll be able to pick you up, but you need to call so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so and see if you can get a ride. And if not, then I'll call so-and-so and we'll see if we go, but make them put the effort in one. Um, two, to start putting my things, the things that I needed to accomplish in with everybody's schedule and everybody's mix to make sure that it had equal status and value versus, oh, I guess I can't go to mine because uh, child number one, child number two, and you know, child number three have this, this, this activity and I, I just can't fit mine in. No, 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 no. Because what happens is that a certain amount of resentment sets in you know, and then also being true to myself, what are my wants and needs? Also putting my dreams aside, you know? Um, I was one of those people that I wanted to go back to school and wanted to get my master's. And I did it while working full time with the family of, of two and, and a husband at the time. And, and, and just saying, okay, everybody, we have to be upfront about our schedules. We have to pull in who we need to pull in and I could be honest to myself, this is something I want, you know, and, you know, of course I got, what do you need that for? You're already working. You already got a full-time corporate job at the time and blah, 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 blah. It's like, because this is what I feel called to do. This is what's important to me. So standing in the truth of what was important to me and then implementing and insisting that room be made for it so that I could fulfill my dream as they're fulfilling their dreams, wants and needs was so important. And I think that that's also part of stop giving away my power, stop giving away all that's important to me. And in essence, giving it to, to people that basically, you know, didn't think twice about it, none whatsoever. So I'm gonna go back to the projections and judgments of others and what people Think of you, how powerful that can be. Has that ever affected you in your life, the projections and the judgments of others and just taking all of that on? I think it was, I'd like, yes, I will, I'll answer that question in respect of projections and thoughts of others. Yes, of course, but that's the people pleasing side of me. That was the worrying about what other people thought about me. So, okay. yeah, absolutely, it affected me, whether they said anything or not. You know, and obviously if people said something, then it really did affect me. Yes, I gave my power away left, right and centre. But going back to what you were saying, it's about when you turn around and said, I am going to at times say no. Because, mm. it, because and do you know what? That constant yes, that constant yes that I said, being the people pleaser. Mm -hmm absolutely was that was me too <laughs> was was so detrimental to two people me and the individual i was always saying yes to mm -hmm. because you stop them from standing in their own power at the same time as stopping yourself from standing in your own power so how to support others whilst being true to yourself actually the being true to yourself, as you were just describing, really empowers others. Yes. Because you're saying, what you're saying is, you've asked me this, to, if I would do something for you. And the answer to that is, I am really sorry, that does not resonate with me. If they truly want that, they can make it happen for themselves. It doesn't have to be me doing it for them or me necessarily supporting them with it. And that's it, powerful. And that is so powerful. That is. So everything we've set up to this point is, is leading to this point. When we learn to say no. 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 Oh, say it again. No, no, no. no. Not no to ourselves, <laughs> we've stopped saying no to ourselves mm -hmm. and we've started saying yes to ourselves. There are going to be times when somebody might ask you something and it's, can you give me an hour or two, a half a day, a day, 
I will come back to you with a yes mm -hmm. or a no. Rather than saying yes and thinking, oh, why did I do that? And either letting them down or letting yourself down. Or both. You know, and it's just like, so be honest with your answer. Mm -hmm. If somebody asks and you're thinking, how does this feel? I need time. Step into your power and say, and be honest. Can I have time to think about it? And if they turn around and say you, they can't, you can't have time to think about it, then you say no. It's that simple. You don't say yes when you there's a potential you mean no. You can say no and you can go back to them and you can say yes, but it's far better to do the no first and go back and say, do you know what? Now I've had time to think about it. I can support you there and there, but I'm afraid I can't do that bit or that bit's not relevant to me or whatever. And do you know what? You do not have to give a reason or an excuse. Mm -hmm. And if people say, well, why is the answer no? Because it doesn't work for me. <laughs> but that's selfish. Uh -uh, excuse me. Can I just get you to look at that word selfish for a minute, please? Okay. So you are expecting me to do what doesn't work for me to keep you happy. Who's being selfish? Say it, sister. <laughs> I, I am being honest. That's right. I am being true to me. And actually in the process, I am empowering you. Perfectly said. Perfectly said. And it leads me right to the next statement that I want to make, which is, and I'm elaborating on what where you are right this moment, which is sometimes saying no is the empowering, empowering support that you can give. I'm just repeat it again. Sometimes saying no, are our, our, our listeners listening to this? Sometimes saying no empowers the individual versus enables them. Yeah. Because if we are always available and always, always at the beck and call, we've lost the purpose of how a person goes after something that they need or they want and then uses their own brain to think on how they're going to achieve it. And then putting steps into place to achieve that work because they feel like they can depend on you. Yeah. Okay. Mom will do it you know, or I'll just make a call to my friend. They'll always do it. They'll always, and you look up and you're somebody's doormat because then the appreciation's gone out the window and the thoughtfulness has gone out the window because they're, the assumption is that, oh, they'll always, always be there. Yeah. And sometimes saying no is the hardest thing in the world. And I've taught, you know, coached to basically, if you are not used to saying no right away, what you'll say is, I'll think about it. I'll get back to you so that you can pause, take a breath, gather yourself, gather your wits about you. Because your first reaction is like, no, but you feel like you can't say it right away. That's okay. I'll get back to you. I'll check my schedule. I'll see if it resonates with me. I'll see if I'm available. You get back to him. No, I'm not. Sorry, can't help you. You're on your own. This, But, 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 but. No, 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 but. I am not available and you can do this and you can work this out. Yeah. I'm sure you can. And if you, if you don't go, maybe you're not supposed to be there. It, it, whether it's going somewhere, doing something, a project, it doesn't matter. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But there's also this thing that I would like to bring in. It's about exchange. Mm -hmm. It's about exchange expecting something in exchange for but and, and this is a conversation i've actually had with my youngest sister we are very good at thinking right if i offer to do so and so for somebody then i can ask them to do that for me but that something that you're offering to do for them may not be actually appropriate for them but we're right. very good at doing it creating an exchange mm -hmm. that 
is not actually equal. Mm. Okay. Because there is really, yes, it is great to be able to give at times and you are looking for nothing in exchange. Right. The giving, the giving is great and you are happy to do it. But there are times when it is, and I think work is the, and the, you know, a lot of the things that we do. When we share for people, it is great to have that exchange, mm -hmm. that energy of exchange, which says to somebody, I appreciate you. I acknowledge the gifts you bring. I value you and what you bring. But what it also says is, I value me enough for there to be an exchange. Mm -hmm. There you go. Because yeah. when I give something back, I am valuing you, me, and the process. Right. And that is another empowering, how to support others and still being true to yourself is I'm not here to take, 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 take. If, if, if it's about, it's just like an exchange. And helping people to realize that the value, valuing and creating an exchange of value actually really is about empowering yourself. Yes. Because you are learning to value you because you are prepared to give something for what you are receiving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I don't even think anything needs to be said after that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So that's, I, I, I'm just going to add another aspect <laughs> of support because I think you're absolutely right. And on this one, I'm going to talk about judge, judge, judging, judgment, judging versus listening. Cause see what happens is that when people say, Oh, I need your support. I need your help. I just needed a friend to speak to, right? We automatically assume that, or sometimes I won't say automatically, but sometimes we assume that our judgment or our opinion is what's being asked for. And I invite people to think about what's being asked of you and even verbally ask, are you asking me my opinion? Or do you want me to just listen? Because sometimes people just want you to listen. They don't want you to commiserate. They don't want you to tell them what they should be doing. They don't want you to give your opinion of how it happened to you and it was worse for you than it was for them. They just want you to listen. And listening skills are lacking so much. We want to hear someone's story and interrupt them. We want to commiserate with them. We want to share our experience about how the same thing happened to us before we fully even fin let them finish speaking their truth. And we don't know how to listen. And I, I, I think about like when I hold women's circles and I use the talking stick. And even when the talking stick is, is the concept for those of you who don't know it is that a stick is passed and the person who holds it Stick is the only one who can speak. And then when the stick is passed to the next person, then that person can speak. So there's no commiserating, there's no interjecting, there's no nothing, there's silence. The person fully heard, the person fully speaks, the person has the floor until the stick is handed and you know off to the next person. And then when I hold um, circles like this, I even say, if a person starts crying, you may not hand them tissues, you may not pat them on the back or anything because that is interrupting the process of listening because by getting the tissue, you know, then their directions on the tissue and, oh my God, I must look a mess or, you know, then, 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 you know, it's taken away from the statement or, you know, the, the pat on the back and I'm holding you like a child and it's like, leave them alone. They're an adult. They can actually make a statement or a child can make a statement, let them fully express themselves. And then when they want companionship or that pat on the back, then they'll come to you, you know? So listening is imperative, is imperative. 
And then the other piece of that is that when we give advice, it doesn't necessarily need to say, well, this is how I feel. It could be that it's a vice of, have you explored that more? I think that you're actually questioning yourself and you just need more information. Or does that resonate with you? Because for us, we're basing on our own experiences. You know, if you're a skydiver, Sarah Jane, and I'm not, and I go, you're crazy. Oh, I wouldn't do that. That's not what you're asking me. If you're coming to me, you're talking, I really want to go skydiving. It's always been my dream. I've always wanted to do it. I said, well, are you that much of an adventure seeker that that's what resonates with you? And you're like, yes, I've always wanted to go for it. Just be safe, but go for it. I'd be happy. I want to see the pictures because, you know, me, I, I, I'm more of a, a, a water person. Give me water. But if you're an air person, I support you fully. You know, it's not always about, oh, I, I wouldn't do that. That's too scary. Well, that's too scary for whom? Yeah. And, you know, again, I'm projecting my judgment about it. And that's not what you came there to ask me. And then the third leg of this, and I, I really want to drive this home is that a lot of times people seek for answers from others when they should be looking inside. And that's where I wanna drive it home. The best support that you can do is telling a person, stop looking outside of yourself for everyone's opinion, look inside yourself, sit with it a while, what resonates for you? What truly resonates for you? Talk with me through it, that's fine but resonating inside to understand what it means to you is the most important because I'm not living it and I'm not doing it. You are. And I'll stop. There. <laughs> okay. Try, try to go th back through these. Um, one, I never give advice. I remember um, when I was, um, oh yeah, I went through my bits and pieces and I was going to a psychotherapist. And one day she said to me, here, take my advice, I'm not using it. Because we're very good at giving advice we will not use ourselves. <laughs> and it was, it was brilliant. And I, have, and I have so remembered that. And that was over 20 years ago. <laughs> so if, people are looking to me for some thoughts, I will make a suggestion from what has worked for me. Unless I find myself channeling some stuff and then I'm, that, then I'm out of it. <laughs> um, I mean, where the heck did that come from? That's got nothing to do with it, but it's still a suggestion. Um, so, but I'm, I'm a practitioner of a technique called metamorphic technique. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that they are very, very strong about with the metamorphic technique is that you stay totally detached from any outcome. And if the individual talk about politics and religion, if you like, but <laughs> which the <laughs> talk about, um, but if they turn around to you and they ask a question, but oh, I fancy going to somebody who does shiatsu or something, even if I knew somebody who did shiatsu. I couldn't say a word. They have to find the answers for themselves. Mm -hmm. And on one particular occasion, I had a client come to me for a session and I was doing the gentle moves on the feet, the hands and the head. And unusually, this particular client talked the whole way through. <laughs> Usually they just go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Talked the whole way through. And I was there and I couldn't say a word. As much as I was, as you said, you you want, you listen because you, and because to reply rather than <laughs> listen to understand. And right. that's the difference. We listen to understand, not to reply. And at the end of the session, they said, that was brilliant. That was exactly what I needed. <laughs> What if you like, they connected with themselves. They'd answered their own questions. Own questions. Yes. So they didn't even need me to listen because actually they very much knew that I couldn't comment. <laughs> <laughs> even if I wanted to. And, yes. yet, and don't get me wrong, 
there were times and I was thinking, I so wanted to say something, but I honored the technique and the practice that I was was using. Yes. And the rules of it. And that individual, they went out as happy as a lark. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think take from that what what you were saying about sometimes it's not even, they don't even necessarily want you to listen. They just wish to have somebody to speak to rather than speaking to an empty room. Mm. Yes, yes. They want to feel heard, but they don't want to be heard (laughs) by anybody but themselves. Mm -hmm. And if that is your way of getting inside, going inside of listening to yourself is to have that conversation outside but then if you're going to have somebody there, if that is what you are looking for, then please let them know. You know, I just wish to voice what is going on in my life at the moment. Yes. But please don't comment. In fact, if you don't want to even listen, it doesn't matter. Will you just please be there for me? Yeah, be just be present. And I have to agree with you on the channeling piece too, because I find that if something's coming through for some, uh, for someone, I will ask, are you sure you want, first, are you sure you want to hear this? Because, and then I also just let them know just that there's certain rules of engagement, you know, but I always, always, always look for them to encourage going inside. That's, that's number one. And the inside can be that having that conversation with yourself. Yes. <laughs> you know, Actually, that's what you know, it should be. <laughs> absolutely. You know, when I think of the number of times I've gone for walks and, you know, and having thoughts, I'm, so I'm not necessarily speaking the words out loud, but I've allowed the thoughts and the inspiration, the light bulb moments that have happened from having that that. Allowing the putting thoughts and things into words, it is so important. So, I suppose, how can we support others with this conversation other than hopefully that they will have heard things that have helped them? Going inside doesn't mean how do I get into my heart, it means how do I open up to myself. Inside, open up. How do we step outside of our comfort zone? It's simple. We step back into ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yes. yes, as much as it may feel, some things may fe- make us feel uncomfortable to start with. Mm-hmm. It's only because it's pushing us. Exactly. Because it's helping us to grow. Mm-hmm. And we go back to the yes and no thing. We, we talked very much about us saying no, but some of the greatest gift we, we, gifts we can receive as somebody saying no to us. Yes. Yes. Rather than yes to us. So it isn't about just saying no to others and yes to yourself. It is about hearing no said to you. Yeah. And receiving it. And receiving it as a gift. As a gift. Not just uh, 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 harboring resentment because somebody said no and how dare they. Yes. Yeah. And um, so when when we circle back to the question, how to support others while being true to yourself or whilst being true to yourself, as, as the British would say it. <laughs> <laughs> Old English, I think, that still comes out in me. <laughs> is, 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 it's just, it's multi-tiered and multi-layered. Yeah. And if you look at it just as a simple statement, then you're looking at it very, very, what's the word I want to use? Three, we're in three dimension versus four, five, six dimension. We're looking at very humanistic. Let me say it this way. We're looking at it very vertical instead of linear. Okay. 
So we're horizontal instead of vertical. Excuse me, let me correct that. Erase that. <laughs> horizontal instead of vertical. In other words, we're looking at it very plainly. We're looking at it in a very simplistic plane and we are not plain beings. And this is, I think what I want to summarize all of this up to is that when we look in a horizontal way, that's just one way of seeing. We are vertical, horizontal, 360 degree beings. There is not just one way. My mom used to say, there's no such thing as no, there's, there's such thing as not that way. There's not any just one way of doing anything yeah. ever, yeah. ever. So that when we look at something as simplistic as being true to ourselves, look at it as just like, oh, I'm honest with myself. You know, there's, it's, there's depth there. And the challenge is, is to step into that depth and shed all the roles and really see what's in there and what it is that you truly want and what it is that you can truly be being the best version of you and then standing in it. And then supporting someone doesn't always dictate an action of an actionable item. Yeah. That sometimes supporting someone as we went through all of the various iterations of it can be saying no, can be listening, can be advising with judgment can be telling someone no can be basically saying go inside yourself and answer your own question or just being present for that person as they do yeah. you know so again multi-tiered multi-leveled multi-dimensional because that commitment that you make that helping that you that help that you make can ripple out and truly truly impact people very profoundly and it's all because you stood in your truth. Yeah. It starts with your own worthiness. It starts with valuing who you are and what you bring to the table. And it starts with honoring you and being the best version that you are that has impact everywhere else. Yeah. Mm. For me, supporting people isn't about doing things for people. It's about supporting them in a lot of cases to do it for themselves. Yes. yes. Because we don't grow while everybody is doing everything for us. We only grow when we start doing things for ourselves. We've all grown up as kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to learn to tie our own laces, do our own buttons up, do our own zips up. We had to start from the very beginning, learning to speak, learning to understand, read, etc. Nobody could do it for us. The things worth having in life are the things we help ourselves to gain. Yes. Whatever that might be. May be. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'd like to finish with one one little quote, which I think leaves perfectly into our next today's conversation program. Okay. <laughs> Attitude is a paintbrush. It colors everything. Yes. And our attitude to ourselves, to other people, to the situation, our attitude to everything does color how we see things. Yes. And our next program, today's conversation program, mm -hmm. is what is the color of life? And we are being joined by Satyavani, who is an artist. So we are going to be looking at this from three different perspectives. perspectives. So that is on Friday, the 11th of September at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time, so if you're in the States, that is, and by <laughs> 5 p.m. here in the UK, because that's where I am. <laughs> so that pro, that's the, the, the next today's conversation. And then next week, no, I think we've got a couple more between then. Oh, we're looking at the wrong one now. Sorry, I've got some information. If it's all <laughs> um, so next week, Wednesday, the 2nd of September, is a thoughtful nuggets and pearls. And I'm going to be sharing Don't Lose Yourself, which I think is actually probably is a, just another aspect of this. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. Beautifully. It, 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 it's so cool. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I love the fact that, you know, all of our programs, today's conversation programs, they have literally led on from one to the next. Exactly. Uh, so I'm hoping it does with, the, with this one because at the end of the month, we've got to do with sound and vibration. So, you know, so <laughs> this conversation has, has got about colour and sound within the next two programs. So I hope you will join those for, yeah, us for those. And I hope you will join me next week for a thoughtful nuggets month. Yes, that's going to be just me. So you're just going to get my thoughts on things. <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't matter whether you've agreed with everything that Anolia and I have said tonight. It doesn't. It really doesn't because it is about perspective. But if what we have shared has given you the food for thought, which is why I do the thoughtful nuggets and pearls. <laughs> but, this is, but I think all of these types of conversations are about food for thought. Helping people to realize that there are other ways to think about things and we can open up and maybe see things a little differently because that is what it's all about. Yes, it so, is giftofhealingtv.com, vocalreiki.com, that's me, Enolia. Um, I am enolia.live and expresshumanity.org. Uh, <laughs> .org, yeah. <laughs> .org. <laughs> yeah. Folks, thank you for joining us. It has been wonderful. Yes, I know, Enolia started it. I'm finishing it. We agreed that at the beginning. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> See, that's beautiful teamwork, isn't it? <laughs> it's all about teamwork. And it's about being ourselves. Absolutely. And coming exactly. from the place we come from. Um, and I hope that, you know, and, and because we're so different, I think it works beautifully. So thank I, you. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you Inside for joining us. <laughs> we'll see you again soon. Uh, and Olia, thank you. And we'll be in, I'm sure thank we'll talk you. again soon. Yes. Love, peace and light to you all, folks. Namaste. Take care. Uh -huh. Stay well. Bye. Bye. <laughs>